Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. The Prime Minister using his budget contribution to address the elephant in the room, value out tax. The whip is on. Members of Parliament prepare to vote for government's 2018-2019 budget. Our news is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, as he wrapped up the budget debate in the House of Assembly today, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis defended his government's proposal to hike the rate of value-added tax to 12 percent. Minnis told Parliament the move was necessary, asserting the new budget is not a VAT budget. Kyle Joaquin tells us more. Well, his contribution lasted all of three hours, and towards the end of it, the Prime Minister addressed the elephant in the room. The government's plans to raise the VAT rate from 7.5% to 12%. We therefore came to the realization that an increase in the rate of VAT to 12% was the only and reliable option to allow us to deal with all the fiscal pressures present Minnis said government found itself weighing all the options from doing nothing with taxes, which he said would have destroyed the country, to raising VAT to 10%, which he said would not have been enough. We looked at 15. That was not an option. That is too much a pain for anybody to burden. And we looked at 12. But we realized there would be some challenges even with 12 but we know how to overcome those challenges. And therefore, we had to increase to 12 so as to protect a future generation. The Minnis administration has come under heavy fire over its decision to increase the rate of value-added tax to 12%. That widespread opposition led hundreds of angry protesters to storm Rosson Square last week. In addition to defending the VAD hike, Minnis, who was the last MP to contribute to the 2018-2019 budget debate, also made several announcements. From a $1 million grant for artists and employment opportunities for young college graduates, to a Bahamas Power and Light Reconnection initiative, which would enable 3,000 disconnected customers to have their power supply reconnected by paying 25% of their bill. Customers may, must maintain monthly payments of current bills, plus 10% of the arrears, which should allow full repayment in 11 months. Civil servants, unless for a special case, will no longer be hired past the age of 65 and must retire at age 65. There's also land reform. Minnis announcing that a request for proposals has been launched for a land audit throughout the country. The information in respect of Crown lands will be used in the determination of outstanding land applications at the Department of Lands and Surveys. The findings will be used as a first, first step to develop a modern land registry in our Bahamas. Minnis also pulling out the axe today. He told Parliament that several contractors were paid up to $100,000 to build homes in Abaco but didn't finish. Those persons, he says, will be prosecuted. Those individuals must be prosecuted for the people's money. Yep. And, Mr. Speaker, they will also be placed on the stop list in terms of doing government's job until our money is returned. And the Prime Minister didn't pass up the opportunity to take personal shots at each opposition member of Parliament. In my opinion, the leader of the opposition spent his career as Perry Christie's sidekick. That's my opinion. He was there to support Christie in their law practice. He was there to support Christie for two decades when he was leader of the PLP. The MP Bangladeshan doesn't support him. You're free, you can speak in here. So she is posturing for attention to bolster her next leadership run. Oh, yeah. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Well, as members of Parliament prepare to vote on the budget tonight, those four government members of Parliament who have come out against an increase in value-added tax received a stern warning from the Prime Minister. Jared Higgs has that. The whip is on as Prime Minister Minna sent out a stern warning to Free National Movement members of Parliament 
ahead of the vote on the 2018-2019 budget, as well as the increase in value-added tax. If you do not care and want to hide behind anything, you will vote no. And an absentee in this parliament during the vote is a no. The only excuse for not being here to vote if you are in hospital and you must be in ICU. <laughs> However, that didn't phase Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine and Centerville MP Reese Chipman, who say they're sticking to their guns and they plan to vote against government's tax increases. Nothing that the Prime Minister said that would um, change my mind or cost me to change my mind. Uh, I support the bill. I do not support the increase of that at 12 percent and at so high. Now, perhaps if it was at a lower level, perhaps I would have given some consideration and been persuaded. But because I'm voting against that does not mean I don't support the bill. I do support the government's budget. I don't support the increase in VAT. You still not support the VAT? No, I will not support a VAT increase. The same can't be said for Bain and Grant's town MP, Travis Robinson, who, despite repeated questions from our news, insisted that he had nothing to say on the matter. Travis. We're just no comment. Travis. Come on. I have no Come comment. On. We in the road. Yeah, we in the road. The behavior. <laughs> we in the road. I have no comment. None. I have no comment. Did Carl come and call you and I tell you that no you had to resign if you didn't vote for the increase? Like I say, we know that you already spoke out in the House of Assembly. Travis, you gotta give us something. Robinson, a parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, has been mum on the issue since announcing in the House of Assembly last week that he would not support government's planned 60% increase in VAT. You plan on speaking about how you plan to vote on this topic? And you don't want to comment on whether you received a call from the party yet? Give us something, Travis. You got to give us something. The payment people really no want to know. They, you know, you said so much inside the House I of Assembly. No comment. MP for Golden Isles and Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Social Services and Urban Development, Vaughn Miller, told the Nassau Guardian last night that he received the call from FNM Chairman Carl Culmer, advising him that if he didn't support the budget, he should have his resignation letter ready. Culmer fired back today, disputing Miller's claims that there was a phone call. He said, I called him. I didn't call him. I didn't call him. I don't call it going that way, that way. That's what I'm saying. Okay? I was, there was a meeting. And I'd like to keep the contents of the meeting within the, within the meeting. Culmer acknowledged that despite the meeting, which was held last Thursday, he has no power to decide the fate of Miller and other MPs who may decide not to support the controversial budget. And I didn't say that he was too well, just advising how the investment system works. That's all, that's all, I was, that's all it was. And I cannot, I cannot, I didn't appoint Vaughn, so I cannot re, um, uh, ask him to resign. When questioned by reporters on his way out of the House of Assembly, Miller stated that he would withhold his comments until this evening. The four members of Parliament in question are all first-timers in the lower House of Parliament. Chipman, who ended former Prime Minister Perry Christie's 40-year reign in Centerville, insists that it's not about securing his political future. It isn't so much about having a political um, ambition. It's about the people and whether they are able to afford the consequences of such level of taxation. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. After the Prime Minister's budget contribution today, the opposition hit back at Dr. Minnis, calling his comments unimpressive. Gillian Gray reports. While attempting to cover all bases, the Prime Minister spoke at length today about his government's budget communication. And after his more than three-hour speech, the opposition said they found it to be rather unimpressive and empty. The Prime Minister's attempt to justify the unconscionable and massive tax increases, taxes on the backs of ordinary Bahamians, fell abysmally flat. It was most unimpressive and lacked a basic grasp of his own budgetary initiatives. PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper agreed, asserting that Minnis' speech was high on the fluff and low on substance. Cooper says instead of laying out an actual plan for the country, the Prime Minister chose to deflect by taking cheap shots at the opposition. This is one of the, the emptiest addresses I have heard. Uh, in my lifetime from a Prime Minister with respect to the budget. He, he enjoyed varying into politics and political discussions uh, as if he is on the campaign trail. Uh, for example, uh, he talked about me applying for a nomination with the FNM 
uh, that is a lie from the pits of hell. <laughs> and fake news, fake news, FNM propaganda. The opposition also accused the Killarney MP of playing the blame game, charging that his budget debate contribution was stained with political rhetoric. This is not about the PLP Prime Minister. It is about the, it's about the FNM and yourself and your inability to govern. It is about the obstinance and arrogance of this administration not to yield to the voices of reason that has crescendo from all aspects of our community. Davis also responded to the Prime Minister's assertion that the budget is not a VAT budget and a vote against the budget would be a vote against the betterment of the Bahamas. It was interesting how the reference to the conscience um, his conscience um, sort of rose to the top and, um, and then the pressure appears to have come to bear on those who are saying they're voting according to their conscience. So we'll see how the, how this, how the conscience thing plays up upstairs. I, I, I'm voting against the huge VAT increases that in my view and opinion, in our view and our opinion, and will, will, will place an unnecessary burden on the ordinary Bahamian, and it's gonna and it's gonna drive down, right, our our quality of life. Reporting for our news, I'm Julian Gray. In other news, the family of 22-year-old Garvanisha Carey speaking out following her tragic death on Munnings Road last week. Her angry parents say the installation of speed bumps and reflectors following the young mother's death are too little, too late. Jasmine Brown has the story. It was at this very spot where Carrie's life came to a tragic end during the early morning hours on Thursday. And while the wreckage has been cleared, the heartache remains. That fact was evident during a candlelight vigil held by the family over the weekend. The Grief mixed with anger as Carrie's grief-stricken parents and friends gathered at this concrete barrier laden with teddy bears, flowers and candles. The vigil came two days after Carrie's car crashed into the controversial barrier at Munnings Road off Gladstone Road. Carrie, the mother of a three-year-old boy, worked at Doctors Hospital and was the eldest of her parents' five daughters. She was killed on her way back home after dropping her mother to the airport around 6 a.m. The concrete barrier was erected on May 3rd in an area of the road that does not have street lighting and no road closure sign in the immediate vicinity. The concrete was placed across the road until a cul-de-sac could be created, but six weeks later there is no sign that work has started. The decision was made to close the road after Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, the MP for Killarney, met with residents, many of whom asked that the road be closed so they can have more privacy. There were also concerns about speeding and a possible rise in criminal activity, with the general public having access to the area to get from Gladstone Road to John F. Kennedy Drive. That I, a Bahamian mother, did not at least deserve a smile, a handshake. The same courtesy you paid me when you needed my vote. Yep. Now, as the family continues to cope with their loss, the investigations are ongoing. And that was more than evident when we visited the scene this morning, where we met a Ministry of Works employee and a police investigator continuing to comb the scene. Police have said based on the damage to the vehicle and the fact that the car was able to move the concrete barriers backward, speed and force played an intricate role. But Mistress Carey said she does not believe Speed killed her daughter. She said there should have been proper signage on the dark road where her daughter died. As for those recently installed speed bumps and reflectors, Carey says they came at a heavy price. Lousy. That's just going to put here. It's nothing. 
the Panther, fresh Bahamian blood, that was shit! Asked if the family intends to seek legal advice over the young mother's death, Mrs. Carey said the immediate concern is burying her daughter and honoring her memory. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, Prime Minister Minnis, who is the MP for Killarney, was asked why reflectors, proper lighting and speed bumps were not placed on Munnings Road until after that fatal accident and whether due process was followed before the road closure. However, Dr. Minnis insisted he is only a politician. Dr. Minnis, on the Munnings Road closure, residents are asking why a lady had to die before a I... speed bump and um, lights were put up. Technical people, they have to ask technical people. Was due process I am a politician, done, I am not a technical man. Was due process done before the road was closed? That, address, that road has been addressed on numerous occasions, so I have nothing else to say about that. Okay, let me go for lunch. The works minister has said area residents petitioned the government for the road closure. Still to come on our news, qualified students will soon have a free ride at University of the Bahamas. And the National Security Minister says the recent spate of murders is alarming. That and more when our news returns.